All right, well, Coach, we wanted to get an introductory interview, get a full, you know, comprehensive, you know, just what you're about. Uh, back in the hiring process, it was clear that the job meant a lot to you. you would throw, according to Jeff Conner, you go through a blizzard just to get to the interview. Yeah. What, what was it about any that made it so important? Well, you know, I've been wanting to be a head coach for a long time. This is my 16th year, and uh, I just felt it was an opportunity to walk into a program that already had a lot of the same standards that I had for the place I was at. I uh, wanted to be on a winning team, I wanted to be champions, I wanted to be in a place where I knew how to recruit that geography. It wasn't far from where my current family is and my wife's family, um, where the grandparents are. You know, so there's a lot of pluses that way. They'd already built this facility, the Orton Center, so I wasn't going to have to totally start over facility-wise. And there was just a lot of pieces in place that made it attractive. Just, was this just sort of the perfect time where you felt like you were ready to become a head coach after so many stops of being a recruiting coordinator, being a defensive coordinator, being a linebacker's coach? Just a culmination of everything? Yeah, I mean, I think I've, I haven't skipped any of the stops, you know. I mean, I was a GA different, two different times. I've coached high school. I've worked my way up the profession from the ground up. And I was at a point where I was ready for a new challenge. And uh, not that I didn't love where I was at, I did. But and my goal has always been if I ever leave somewhere, I want to leave it in better shape than when I got there. And I felt like I did that. You know, when I took over at Wisconsin, we left in a Rose Bowl season. And this was just a challenge that I've been waiting for and knew that I was ready for. Coming from a mid major school yourself in Drake, mm -hmm. you know, do you feel like it's kind of familiar territory? You know, you're not exactly coming from, you didn't exactly graduate from Wisconsin. Right. right? You're a mid major student yourself. Yeah, lower than that even, but uh, yeah, not, not to discount Drake, but we are a non-scholarship football program, so um, I look at NIU as a program on the rise that's chipping away at a lot of BCS schools, and uh, the goals that they've set here are extremely high. You know, at Drake, we were the fifth or sixth story in the paper, you know, I mean, there was a lot of people that were, if we won a game, we might get a line or two, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of different expectations here than there were at that place. Coming, you know, just a, not even a year removed from the Rose Bowl, how much does it help you as a coach knowing what it takes to get to that big game? Uh, it helps a lot. You know, I told the players, I've been there. I've uh, been fortunate to be a part of, you know, two national championship games when I was at Montana. And I've been on eight bowl teams, been in uh, four conference championship teams. So I know not only how to get to the big game, but to win it. And I think that's huge for our guys to know that the guy leading them is not going to get there and have big eyes. Yeah. On the other hand, you know, you, recruiting coordinator in Montana, you guys won the FCS national championship. What what was that experience like? What was, what was you know, kind of being at you know a smaller school and winning a national title there? Yeah, well, we went to back to back championships. We were twenty eight and three in two years. You're in the playoffs, so it's a totally different postseason experience. Um, it's it's an amazing process when you play a long schedule and that was the year 9-11 so you went through kind of a crazy year anyway but uh, you know to go through the playoffs you play 15 to 16 games and then to win it, it it's quite an experience for your guys and you know at that one moment when the clock runs out you know that you're better than everybody at your level it's a pretty exciting exhilarating moment as far as recruiting there how did how did how is your philosophy about recruiting changed and how how is it how did it start and how is it kind of at Montana or you know, just as far as when you first start recruiting and then, you know, as, as you've gone down the line. You know, every school you're at, you kind of, you have to look at what you can get. Uh, you have to look at what you have. You have to look at um, kind of what your, your blueprint is from a geography standpoint. I mean, I've always felt you start in state, you draw a fence around the state you're in, and then you go to all the borders that touch your state, and you try to get as many as those guys, because a lot of them will have family that lives in your state. Um, and then when you cross outside of that part, you look at, all right, who has the greatest connections in those further states? And that's kind of what we're doing here. You know, we're touching all the surrounding states. We go to Florida because I have great connections in Florida. And, you know, that's Coach Matukowicz has, has also got those connections. And, you know, that's kind of our blueprint. You, you decide early on, are we a team that can recruit the junior college ranks? Um, here we are at other places I haven't been. You know, that's a part of what you decide to do as well. But uh, every school is a little different, you know. I mean, the talent level you can attract, 
but I've always believed in trying to get into every school, trying to do as many live evaluations as you can as opposed to just watching video. And uh, I work in our guys that we're going against. Don't just go in there once, see a player, and think you're going to get them. I mean, you got to be on the phone, you got to create a network, and they got to trust you. How, how important at NIU in recent years has kind of been all Illinois guys, you know, the bulk of the recruiting class? Florida, five guys from, from Florida this year. Mm -hmm. How much do you want to stress the just really the Southern states, the powerhouse states of football talent in the future? Yeah, um, we're going to get the best guys we can get, man. I, mean, it, I would love it if all 25 came from Illinois, but they're not going to always come from Illinois this year. A lot of the best players that we wanted to get were already committed to other schools, and we weren't able to get in on some of those guys. We're going to start there. You know, and if we can't find those guys there, we're going to go elsewhere to get them. You know, how it ends up in the end, I won't be able to tell you until next year, you know what I mean? But the goal is going to be to get as much as we can from as close as we can. You were talking about how you guys had to scramble this, this most recent recruiting class, kind of you guys had to travel in a group, get as many guys as you can. How is it going to be this year? How is it going to be to more control, if you will? Well, I mean, we'll have a lot bigger pool. You know, nobody's really committed to anybody right now. So there's a ton of guys to look at. Um, we'll get a large pool of guys that meet our standards. We'll get as many in-person evaluations as we can. We'll get as many position coaches to cross over with geographical areas. And you know, once we come back from our spring evaluation period, we'll see where we're at and try to get as many of those guys as we can to our camps. And we'll have a pretty good idea of what we got left after that. Are you gonna, as far as your role, are you gonna be going down like your territory of Florida and Wisconsin? Are you going to be going down there a lot, or is it going to be more a delegation? You well, you know, the recruiting rules don't allow me to go out a lot. As a head coach, I can't go out in the spring. I'm only allowed one in-person contact during the, the fall contact period. So I'm only going to be out when the, the rules allow me, and I'm not going to pick a state to say that's where I'm going. I'm going to be where I have to go. And, you know, if I get a chance to go to Florida, I'll make sure I touch all the people I know while I'm there. But I'm going to go to where the players are that our assistants get us interested in. As far as your over your scheme for the team this year, you decided to install no huddle offense. What what went into that decision? You know, it's uh, no huddle is can be fast, can be slow. I wanted the ability to change the tempo throughout the game. I didn't want we're not the fast pace. How many plays can we get off in a game offense? But we're going to have the ability to do that. And uh, you know, I believe that time of possession is a big statistic that goes unnoticed that we will look at here hard. But our offensive coordinators had great experience with it. I've had to defend it. I think it's tough to defend when a team can change, change, change the pace of the game. So that's something I wanted our guys to have. And the way I look at offensive football through the defensive eyes, uh, I want what we do on offense to be aggressive. I want it to be physical, and I want defenses to have to use all their rules against us. And that's kind of what I've done with Coach. You know, He's taught me what he knows. And I said, well, here's all the things that are difficult for me as a defensive guy put that in there. Now you're coming in after Jerry Kill left the program. Yeah. Right you know, right right after the next championship game. He was a riser, you know, after three years. Took the took the program up better than he it was better uh, when he left than he got here, yeah. much like your goal. You know, people are saying a little weary. You're you're a riser much like him. You know, i What what his goal is to win a Mac championship, what's your goal besides leaving it in a better spot? No, I mean that's it. My goal isn't to leave it. My goal is to win while I'm here. And I'm going to be here as long as they let me be here. You know, and that's how I've always taken everything in this profession. And if you worry about the job you have and you make it the best job that you can make it, someday somebody may offer you something. Someday they may not. I don't worry about that. You know, I want to win the conference championship every year I'm here, and that's my goal. We want to be the best team in the MAC. We want to be the team that everyone else in the MAC wants to be. And that's what we're going to try to do over and over and over. If we can get it done, great. That's where we're going to be. What are the steps, you know, in the initial steps to get begin becoming a, you know, one of those TCU, one of those Boise States, one of the, the mid majors that consistently win their win their conference, mm -hmm. consistently are in, are in the are in the big picture. What are the ingredients? What yeah, what are the ingredients? What are the well, I mean, th those are two programs that are run like a Wisconsin, like an Alabama. I mean, there, there is no. If you go to their facilities, they've got great facilities. Their coaches get paid a ton of money. I mean, it's those programs are run just like the programs in the Big Ten are run, just like the programs in, you know, obviously not TCU's in the Big East, so they are a BCS team now. But uh, 
they don't just talk about it, they be about it. You know what I mean? And you have to have talent, obviously. You have to have consistency on your staff. Boise's staff has been remarkably intact. I think this is the first year maybe that they've lost. The year before they lost a coordinator, this year they lost a coordinator. But before that, Coach Peterson had been able to keep his assistance when other schools tried to come hire him away mm -hmm. because they gave him enough money to do that. You know, are we going to do that here? I don't know. But you know, those are the things that help you win when you can keep your coaches around because now you have continuity offensively, defensively in your recruiting areas in the town. You're not constantly training people on how to do what you want. They already know what to do. And uh, so those are all things that matter. And you know, th this school hasn't had 10 win, 10 win, 10 win, 10 win seasons. They've had, you know, kind of steady and bam, they hit a big spike and then they go back. And last year they went to 11 wins. You know, our goal was to maintain a high level of success. What have you learned about this team through the first uh, first three weeks of spring practice? Uh, they love football. These guys love going to practice. And we ask them to do some tough things here. You know, we, we get out early in the morning and we don't have an indoor, so we're in cold weather. And the guys don't balk it, they, they don't complain, they go to work. They enjoy competing against each other. Uh, they're a very tight-knit bunch of guys that care about each other. And you know, the things that have happened here adversity-wise have only made that even tighter. But uh, it, it's never a situation where you have to ask them to play hard. You know, we're coaching a lot of things, but the effort isn't one of them. And that's one thing I really enjoy about our players. With Devon going down, it, I guess there was a lot of energy on Saturday, the first practice back, and then the guys were clearly using the rally call, using one of their fallen teammates. Mm -hmm. how, how have you liked their response to the adversity? Well, I think it was really a lesson in uh, perspective for our team and our coaches. You know, I mean, like, you get so hung up with catching the football, blocking a guy, tackling a person, getting after a kid for not putting his hat in the right place or his hands in the right place. And then all of a sudden, one of your best guys is laying in a bed fighting for his life. And he can't do any of those things that you think are so important. He needs to live. And so I think it gave everyone perspective on how important it is just to enjoy what we have while we have it. And that Saturday was kind of a representation of that. You know, all the guys went out there just excited to play a game that one of their brothers can't play. You know, and so it's given us all coaching the same way. I mean, I know when I walked on the field that day, I was. I'm always thankful to be coaching, but I was even more thankful because you don't know when something bad can take that from you. After after watching this team, after watching film of spring practice, you know, right. nine, how have your expectations increased? Have you have you gotten a little more excited about the a couple quick season? Uh, you know, I'm excited about where we're at certain days. I mean, it, it, we're a long ways away from being anything right now. I mean, right now we're we're a bunch of guys trying to create a, a conference championship. But we've got a ton of work to do. You know, and all the pieces aren't here. I mean, if you go to practice, half our starters are watching because they're hurt on defense right now. We've got a ton of injuries on defense. And none of them are major, none of them are lifelong, but they're all things that are keeping them from being who they can be. You know, the offense has got everybody. You know, so there's a lot of offensive momentum right now, I think. And you know, so I'm anxious to kind of get the entire team with our signees out there at the same time in August to see what we got. What do you what do you hope your team's identity to be coming the fall? You obviously thought no one else going to grab the headlines, but you know what, what do you want your defense to be about? I want our defense to be aggressive. I want them to be physical. Uh, I want them to be a team that doesn't beat themselves. Very opportunistic. Uh, take away defense, it creates opportunities for our offense. And you know we're not going to be a team that blitzes 90 percent of the game. That's not going to be what we're about. We're going to play sound football. We're going to make people beat themselves, and we're going to take advantage of it when they do. You know, you're coming in, uh, head coach Mark Montgomery is coming a couple weeks ago. Two guys coming from Big Ten programs really, a lot of, with a lot of uh, hype around you guys. What have your impressions been about, been about him? Yeah, I've been around him a few times. Uh, I know he's in a, similar to me in his intensity. I know he loves the game that he coaches. He's got a lot of passion for recruiting, and so do I. You know, I haven't got to spend a lot of time with him yet socially, but uh, our interactions have been good. How do you how do you how do you plan to be part of the community, the Decal community? You know. Um, well, I have three children in the schools. Uh, my wife will be around quite a bit. Obviously, I've already done a few things charity-wise, and I got a few things coming up. But all of our coaches, including myself, are going to be a part of different activities throughout the community. 
each one of our position coaches and their wives and their position group will be a part of the charity. So there'll be 10 different things going on throughout the year with our guys. And you know, that's the biggest way that we want to give back, you know, is each having something that we represent. As far as DeKalb itself, is you, have you found any favorite places? Any favorite, any favorite places to eat or relax? Well, you know, I live at the Best Western right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so I, I walk to where I eat usually at night. And, you know, I can obviously go down to Lucalo's or to the Chinese place next door, the, the Happy Walk. I think yeah, it is. And I go over to Fatty's or whatever. But there's a lot of great restaurants. Um, the Villa Verona and, you know, the Taxco and, and, and PJ's out in... Yeah, that's all I do is eat out at night. So, you know, I pretty much hit every restaurant here in town. I don't have one that I call the one I have to go to yet. At Fanny's, uh, Jerry Kill has his own parking spot. Have you looked into that? <laughs> Jeff told me about that, the owner over there. He's a great <laughs> guy. And, you know, he, we do a charity together, a uh, golf tournament in the summer. And if he gives me one, he gives me one. I mean, that's nothing that I need. Okay, thanks a lot, Coach. Yeah,